Okay, um, what are we talking about? We are. I want to go through how the node structures actually work. So, so how does how does the protocol order transactions? Um, that's the the net outcome that we want to achieve with any results. So, so we assume a network where we have, uh, let's go with, let's go with seven, let's go with five nodes. Okay, so we have, so these are representations of nodes. So we have node A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, no denomination, so these are computers, um, and or mobile devices, whatever it may be, that is currently running the software that allows it to participate into the network. Um, we assume this is from Genesis or a root event, which means that we have root blocks, which we can denominate with uh, A1, B1, C1, D1, E1, and F1. So these are event blocks and or leak events and or root events. Um, each node interacts asynchronously. Um, the first node, any given one, it doesn't matter for our example, let's use A. A decides, A receives some transaction payload and it needs to start a communication round. So the very first thing it does it creates a new event block. It creates a new event block and it refers to itself as its parent node. Um, it needs to select a configurable value of K, amount of nodes. Um, in this example, A is aware of all five network participants, so it's N is five um, and its K is three. So that's our target number. So that means to generate this event block, it needs to communicate with three nodes in total. So in our example, let's make it nice and easy for drawing purposes. And we reference E1 and C1. Okay, so what's happening in that event block right there? So, so the first thing is it starts keeping track of its own flag table. Now its flag table is a reference to all of its previous routes. Now remember we said all of these are routes. So it is currently doing A1, um, actually for simplicity's sake, let's reference the node and not the, the actual root. So it references A, B, and C. Now at the same time, um, we had, let's say E, that also decided it was going to generate an event. So it generated an event block, it refers to itself, and then we choose two others. So now we have its flag table that is referenced to D, E, and A. F couldn't create anything in this round because it had a synchronous connection to E, same with D to E, C to A, and E to A. So no other event blocks could have been created in this round and no other communication occurred in this round. Um, our next step, we go to a new round. At this point, B wanted to create something. So B creates its event block, references itself. B is aware of A because it had communicated with A, so it references A1, and B communicates to its nearest neighbor, so let's say it communicates to C. Um, A, B, C, all involved. D decided it was going to create one as well. So D has its own reference to itself. Um, D is aware of E, so it communicates to E, and it communicates to F. So now, on this new event block, the routes that it is aware of, it is aware of D, it is aware of F, and it is aware of E, and by virtue of this, it has reachability to D, E, and F, but it already has direct relationships with D and F. So technically, we just have E. Um, in this circumstance, exactly the same, we'll have A, B, C, for the same reasons. 
So next sequence of events, we round, we'll get to the language just now. So now for argument's sake, we say um, D wants to create a new one. So, so D again creates a new one here, references itself. Um, it decides it's going to communicate with B. So it has a conversation with B and it learns about this new event block. So it now references this new event block um, and it decides it's going to talk to E. So it ends over there. At the same time, if it decides it's going to create an event block, E is involved in that communication, E is involved there, B is involved here. So when it tries to create this event block, it references itself and it communicates to, to E, it can't because E is currently in a synchronous connection. D, it can't currently in a synchronous connection. So it decides to communicate to C, and it decides to communicate to A. Which now means our next event block structure here, we have A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, E, F. We'll come to what that means just now. For this guy, we have A, um, and by virtue of knowing about A, it had to reference its top event block. So it doesn't actually reference by there, it actually references directly there. Um, so it's aware of A, B, C, and it is aware of F, um, F, and C, F, and C. That already has a reference. Okay, so how many nodes? One, two, three, four, five, six. So for consensus, we need two, six over three, plus one year. So as soon as we go anything over four, we are happy that that is a consensus node. So this means that this becomes a root and this becomes a root. So these are now the first two roots of the round. So that technically means that this round closes and we have a new round. That's what happens practically. Um, technically, that happens a little bit later, but we'll get into when and how it happens. Um, so the next thing that it now needs to start is that it is a new root. Um, it is the root of D. So it has a new flag table where each root is D. Same here, so it has a new one where each root is F. Uh, we continue, we make another event block. Time. It's a, a decides again. So A speaks to there. It decides it's going to talk to B and it's going to talk to D. Um, C also does one. C decides it's going to talk to, to E. It's going to talk to F. Ah, so what happens as soon as those ones start communicating there. Um, we quickly draw up their flag table. So in this case, we have A, B, C, F, A, B, C, F. We have C, C already marked. Um, we have, where else did we go? We have D, E, F. So D, E, and E join. So what does that mean? That means we know this becomes a new root. And this is the new C root. We also have A block, so what do we see there? It will reference A, B, C. Uh, already has reference to A, B, C, has reference to A, B, C, E, E, F, so E, E, F, and we know it's a new root, and we know it references A. Now we have a new root for the round here as well. So this is um, root A, this is root C, this is root D, this is root F. Okay. So now the structure continues on. So let's actually just add a few more and we'll, we'll for, for efficiency's sake, we'll do this quick and we'll start with E next. So E will reference itself over there. Let's give it this root. Let's give it this root. So that closes with E. Let's not do E. Let's instead do A. So A communicates itself there. Let's give it C, um, and it, oh, oh, I put it because C was in synchronous communication with this new event block. So instead, I will select D, um, and I will select 
synchronous, synchronous, synchronous. So I have to select B, which means my flag table here. Um, this is a new route, so I ignore this subset. I am communicating there, um, which is technically of the previous set, so that will not count as anything yet because I'm not referencing a new root set. For my new flag table ends up being A, um, a reference to um, where's my secondary my secondary reference is to root D, so A D becomes my new baseline. Um, and this will continue on until all of the roots of the round is selected. So um, basic structure of how the event blocks is created, how the flag table is used to identify a new route, and the structure just keeps flowing on like this until the, the whole route round is closed and it starts with a new one and all of the flag tables are to the secondary flags. Um, okay, quickly on Lamport timestamps. <coughs> so Lamport timestamps are just a logical timestamp sequence. So these were our root events. So we would have Lamport 1, Lamport 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is just an incrementing digit. Um, so in this case, it's referencing a 1, a 1, and a 1, so it's just a 2. It's the second one created. Um, in this case as well, 1, 1, 1, so it's just a 2, the second one created. Um, we look at our next round, we're referencing a 2, a 1, and a 1, so we increment from 2, so we are a 3. Same story here, we're referencing a 2, so we are a 3. A little bit boring here, it starts getting more interesting when you have a little bit more depth. Um, next up, we look at this round, so I'm referencing a 1, I'm referencing a 1, and I'm referencing a 2, so that makes me a 3 lamp. I'm referencing a 3, I'm referencing a 3, I'm referencing a 2, so I am a 4 lamp. Board. Referencing a three, referencing a two, doesn't have a number yet, so let's do this guy first. Um, I have a two, I have a three, and I have a four, so five. I have a one, I have a two, and I have a three, so I am a four. Um, I have a four, one, and a three, so I am a five. And over there, we have a two, we have a five, so we will be a six. All right, so why are the Lamport timestamps important? Because what we want to achieve, so we received a bunch of transactions in here, we received a bunch of transactions in here, 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 and we keep getting transactions consistently. Now, all we want to do is we want to order these transactions. We want to be able to take them out of here, package them into a standard block structure, and then provide that actual some kind of ordering mechanism. So I still need to prove which happened first. Um, Landports makes it nice and easy because then the first thing we can do, now we just put the FTP names to all of these nodes. So this was a root run. So we don't care about. Um, let's call this. I might need a new denomination because we have node numbers and we have root numbers. Um, so let's keep with our our numbering standard here. So you will be a two, which means you are a three, and you are a four. Um, you will be B two, nothing else. C, C two, D. D2, D3, and we have E2, D3, and we have F2. So if I want to close this round here where the new routes came into existence, I want to order these guys. Um, the first way I'm going to order them is I'm going to use the Lamport timestamp. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, so, so for timestamp number two, we have A2 and we have for timestamp number three, we have B2 and we have D2. For timestamp number four, um, we have nothing in this round, so we just have these four blocks. So already I know that A2 and E2 happened before B2 and D2, and that's the happen before relationship that Lamport has as well. Uh, but now I still want to sort A2, E2, and B2, D2. So now the next thing I do, and this is where where the root flag levels start becoming important. So, so this is the dominator relationship. So how a dominator relationship works is F1 has a domination relationship with F2 because a path has to go through F1 to get to F2. Total domination happens when all paths um, must go through a specific element and then that is the total domination. But we, we have this so that shows us that domination relationship already. So in this particular instance, I want to know that A2 or E2 come first. So if I start looking at the roots, it knows about A, but it doesn't know about E. 
So its virtual vote in this circumstance will be that A is before E, because it has no reference knowledge of E. Um, which is kind of interesting. Here we have E and we have A, so as far as this root is concerned, A is equal to E. Uh, here we have A and we have E, so as far as he's concerned, A is equal to E. Here we have A and we have E, so as far as he's concerned, A is equal to E. You can't vote yet. Um, you were a new one, so let's just put you add in your numbers. You would have been A, B, C. F, E, uh, e D, so if you close down, and you become F, E, C, and the new one. So their work would be A is equal to E. So when I'm busy sorting between A and E, I have one for less than, I have equal, 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 equal. So A2 is less than E2. And we can use A2 to package before E2. We do the same setup for B and D. I know about B, so B is less than D. I know about both, so they're the same. I know about both, I know about both, I know about both. So in this case, B is less than D2. So now already we know that our output ordering is A2, E2, B2, D2 and subsequently all of the transactions that were packaged in them and the transactions ordered by nonce as per usual. Um, by nonce as per usual. Okay, so now we have an ordering mechanism to package from here into a block with logical ordering. Um, now what about if all of them said it was the same? If all of them said it was the same, um, the net result doesn't actually matter. We do a normal hash compare between the two events our hashes, um, and the lesser of the two is the first one that goes into the sequence, um, specifically because at that point of time where they are exactly the same from that principle, um, the state that outputs them can apply them however that instead of the system we need to orchestrate what the sequence of events was. Um, most likely uh, a case of a double spent, so whichever one you apply first is the one that is successful. Anything else we need to go through here still? We've gone through event block creation, route selection, new round, secondary flag tables, how the event works, and how it uses that to actually pack it out from land boards and from dominator relationships. Um, this gives us a very neat normal block output. So you go from your um, opera chain, which is the DAG, into your block output, which is your uh, main chain, um, and your net result is a standard transaction block that you can apply to any VM step that is system and or transaction ordering for standard cryptocurrencies. I think that summarizes it. All right, cool. Good night, everyone later.